France has been at the heart of West European American culture from its beginnings. And Provence, that ancient province of southern France, even today shows us the roots of our civilization in such places as the island of Camargue, the city of Arles, the towns Saint Marie de la Mer and Aigues Mortes. The broken columns and empty stone seats of a Greek theater in Arles take us back over 2,000 years to a city that was old even then, that had traded with the Phoenicians and Greeks of antiquity. In these earliest centuries, Provence had been inhabited by people who were closely related to the peoples of Spain and Italy, as well as northern France. They were the Celts, Iberians, and Ligurians. The amphitheater of Arles, once the scene of entertainment as bloody as that in the Colosseum of Rome, symbolizes the Roman occupation. For 500 years, Provence, or Provenicia Romana, became almost completely Roman in language, law, religion, buildings, and in the brilliance of its culture, rivaled Rome itself. The Roman dead have even left their sculptured tombs here in the Arles Camp, Avenue of the Dead. The grandeur that once was Rome died in the 5th century, but the stones from Roman buildings, arenas, palaces, triumphal arches, roads, aqueducts, baths, and forums were used in later buildings. Such a building is the San Trophime Cathedral, built in the 12th century around an earlier church. The obelisk, once a part of the Roman circus, is a reminder that Egypt and other countries lying to the east along the Mediterranean have influenced Provence. The religions of Persia and Greece and pagan Rome were practiced here, but only Christianity flowered here, and in the finest of Romanesque architecture left enduring monuments in carved stone. Saint Trophime is truly Provençal in that it combines the elements of Roman and Byzantine architecture that appealed most to the temperament and climate of Provence. The rounded arch and dome, the use of sculpture, and interior decoration. The people of Provence today are still a part of their long history. They grow rice, wheat, and raise sheep in the fields watered by the Rhone River as it rushes from its headwaters near Lake Geneva and empties into the Mediterranean here at its delta, the island of Camargue. They are well known for their wine, olive oil, and perfume. They tend vineyards and orchards. But under the hot sun of the south, they are still a people to be set apart among the French. They are loquacious, free in their thinking, thrifty and prudent like other Frenchmen. But their customs reflect the East. Their language, Provençal, is completely their own. At Saint-Marie-de-la-Mer, as an instance, there survives an annual custom that goes back to the 12th century. It is called Le Fête des Saintes and draws a hundred thousand pilgrims to this survival of an early Christian mystery. Among the pilgrims are many gypsies who have come to pay homage to their patron saint, Saint Sarah. The church of Les Saint Marie is of the 12th century, built upon the site of a far older shrine destroyed by the Saracens. It is a fortified church and is a reminder that the church was sometimes a refuge during the wars of the Middle Ages. Provence has seen the invasions not only of Celts and Romans, but of Goths, Franks, and Saracens. And the influence of these invaders remains a part of the heritage of the people today. In this sense, the people are as old as their monuments. They tend the famous black bulls and white horses of Camargue, as was done before the Christian era, when the heads of bulls like these appeared on Greek coins. And horses like these were depicted in the friezes of the Parthenon. Bulls were associated with the worship of Mithra, a Zoroastrian god of the ancient Persians and Mithraism was practiced in Provence in Roman times. These solitary guardians who live with their herds in deserts and marshes may, in their leading the present pilgrimage, 
be following a ceremony from the long forgotten worship of Mithra, the god of light and the sun. But the pilgrims who celebrate the 24th and 25th of May are remembering the Christian legend of the three Marys who landed here after coming miraculously from the Holy Land in an open boat after the death of Christ. The pilgrims from Arles wear costumes as traditional as their culture and beauty, a beauty wherein perfect Greek features prevail. Little wonder that painters like Van Gogh, Gauguin, and Cezanne have been attracted to Provence, or that poets like Frederick Mistral have sung of the spirit of the land. The religious processions that have wound through these narrow streets for past centuries are a part of the people, like their language, which is closer to the old Latin than to French. The three saints being honored reflect the temper of the people. Two are canonized, Saint Marie Jacob and Saint Marie Salome. But the third, the gypsy Saint Sarah, has not been canonized. The statues of the saints are taken from the church of the Saint Marie and carried in triumph on the shoulders of the devout as the crowd sings Ave Marias. It is perhaps typical of the Provençals that they should maintain religious customs of a kind that have died out almost everywhere else in Europe. But here, where antiquity is a part of everyday life, there is no incongruity. The religious excitement of the crowd mounts as the procession leads the saints to the sea, where the Archbishop of Aix will impart his blessings upon the sea and the people. The people shout, Long live the saints! The gypsies cry, Santo Cero! Santo Cero! The guardians enter the sea on their white horses. The saints return to the shore where they first landed. The Archbishop imparts his blessing, saying, Vive les Saints! The gypsies, as though to correct him, cry, Vive Santicero! And the archbishop, as though corrected, cries, Long live the Saints and Saint Sarah! All of the pilgrims are now happy and ready to return to the town where there will be dancing far into the night. And thus will end a medieval pilgrimage to be found only in Provence. The Canal du Midi symbolizes the constant connection between Provence, the Mediterranean, the Atlantic, the world. But still, as at Egmort, Provence is steeped in its own full history. The tower, Carbonier, guards the road to the old fortified town. These crenellated walls, 25 to 36 feet high, dominated by towers, are constant reminders of that period in the 12th and 13th centuries when Provencal culture was at its height. From here, knights in armor sailed under the leadership of King Louis IX of France for the last two crusades in 1248 and 1270. The troubadours of Provence, with their poetry and music, spread their ideals of high romance throughout the land for all time to come. The troubadours symbolized romance. Chivalry was symbolized by King Louis IX, better known as Saint Louis. He was greatly loved by his people, was the very personification of what was best in the Middle Ages. He was the last of its great personalities. He built this town, and later his son, Philippe, built the walls. It was one of the finest examples of medieval city planning. Louis is said to have gathered an army here of 36,000 crusaders and a fleet of 1,000 ships. Yet today, it is almost deserted. It stands isolated on a marshy plain and may be compared to the people of Provence themselves. The moats and marshes are but barriers against the outsiders who have invaded their land again and again in the past 3,000 years. The country itself stands like the chiseled rock in its fortresses, firm and complacent. In its long years, Provence has absorbed to itself the beauties and wonders of other lands along the Mediterranean. It has suffered sorrows, hardships, wars. It has contributed its share of faith, goodness, and beauty to our heritage.
to West European American civilization. And its quiet life still goes on.